anyone can be a victim of a hate crime. My name is Ellen Vest, and I've been 29 years with the San Diego Sheriff's Department. I'm currently assigned as a gang detective, recognizing hate crimes. We need to be vigilant. We have a problem with bias-motivated crimes, and it's a growing problem. The perception of San Diego is it's a beautiful resort area. However, Southern California seems to be a hotbed for skinheads and skinhead gangs. Today, we're talking about white supremacy and white skinheads. There are different groups, that's just what we see here in San Diego. In a hate crime, you want to think about documentation. It's how you find your motive. Report and document hate incidents. We heard the call for a bar check come out, and we decided to respond along with patrol. My partner and I pulled in the driveway. We circled around and saw the two suspects. We followed them with our vehicle, and we pulled behind their vehicle and blocked them in. They were arrested for striking our victim, causing him to hit his head on the concrete, causing uh, severe brain damage. We followed up that case with a search warrant. This tattoo right here is a swastika on his shoulder. We found out that this particular individual would be in the bars on, on 420, which is Hitler's birthday, and he would sing happy birthday to Hitler. Timothy Caban was convicted of this and another hate crime, sentenced to 17 years in prison. Sylvester Wilson was sentenced to a lifetime of this, brain damage. With our victims of these crimes, it takes twice as long for them to recuperate. Are you going to be around for them to call? Hate crimes affect everyone, and victims need support. Hello. Hi, Mr. Wilson? Yes. Hi. At least How are you? <laughs> yeah, you are. Hi, Sylvester. I'm How are you? Good, good. You look great. Thank you. You look great. So you're working on your motor skills? Um. Yeah. He has a lot of seizures, and the seizures are always a setback. So whatever you've gained over time, then when he has a seizure, then you, you get set back again. I still don't remember what happened to me. I still don't. If we'd been 30 seconds earlier. Yeah, I know. It wouldn't have happened. People do the hate crimes, mm -hmm. you gotta really make them feel it because you can't undo the damage. You're looking for that payback for the victim. There may be several incidences that occur prior to the actual crime. Identify symbols of hate. That's the history, getting the history down. So you may have someone graffiti a park or yell out a slur. It's important for patrol to document those incidences. So you catch it early, and hopefully that'll prevent the hate crime. When we have that actual crime that occurs, we might know who those suspects are because you're identifying that individual and his bias. That's what we take to court with us to prove why they committed a certain hate crime. I think the most satisfying thing in my job is getting people to recognize, getting patrol to recognize gangs and to recognize what they're out there doing. The white signifies that he's a racist skinhead, but he hasn't brought blood. With the red, red shoelaces signifies he's brought blood. If you see two of these guys walking down the street, be afraid of the white laces. He's the one that's gonna do the beating to earn his red laces. Anybody can be a victim. You're responding to religious areas in your neighborhoods or where you're working. You're responding to a church, a mosque. So if they cause a hate crime, that means everybody, not just that victim, but that victim's family, that victim's community, and anybody else living in that area are gonna say what? 
I've had my victims tell me this. I'm moving out of this area. I can't stay here. Hate crimes are message crimes. It's to send a message not only to that victim, but to his community. Don't want you here. It can really affect a lot of people. It's can you keep the recognition of these guys alive for year after year after year with new patrol guys? Once you're gone, who's going to take that over? Who's going to continue the work? You've got to have your work continued. Identify your suspects. That's the best thing you can do for your community. Work with your community to reduce and prevent hate crime. Working with your community and the people in your community to identify hate crimes or possible hate crimes, you need to listen to the people that call in and they're calling in bar checks, they're calling in graffiti in the park. I think this community has done a good job of that. They developed a human relations board to make sure that if you didn't feel comfortable calling law enforcement, you felt comfortable calling them and reporting incidences, then they could be the voice. If you have a watchdog situation where law enforcement's working with the community, working with the people, and it's a good give and take, then hopefully you'll prevent a hate crime from occurring in those areas.